Chapter 13, Section 1 introduces the simple linear regression model. The simple linear regression model indicates that a dependent or response variable y can be described as a linear function of an independent or predictor or explanatory variable x. Beta naught refers to the intercept and beta 1 refers to the slope of the linear relationship. This part of the model is referred to as the deterministic part of the model. You may see this expression or this expression set equal to this linear expression and referred to as the true regression equation. This is the expected value of y given that the variable x takes on a value little x. And this is mu or the mean of y given the variable x takes on a value little x. The model also assumes that this linear relationship between x and y is not perfect. That is, there will always be random factors that will result in some random error. Here are some places where simple linear regression might apply. For example, we may try to predict the service call time using the number of units to be serviced during that service call. Here are some other places where simple linear regression might apply. I'll let you read those. There are four model assumptions in simple linear regression. The first one, linearity, is really on the deterministic part of the model. It says the linearity in the deterministic part of the model is appropriate. The last three model assumptions are on the random error. They are independence. The random error terms are independent of one another. Normality. The random error terms are normally distributed. And equal variance. The random error terms have the same tendency to, to depart from the deterministic part of the model. Section 1 was the theoretical side of simple linear regression. Section 2 is the sample side. We'll assume we have linked data. So we have n data points here. x1 might be the number of units serviced on the first service call and y1 might be the time of the first service call, etc. for n service calls. A scatter plot of the data might look like this. We clearly see the deterministic part of the model might be appropriate here. That is, we may be able to predict y values, height values, based on x values. Using calculus, the simple linear regression equation that best fits the data in the sense of least squares is obtained. Now, we're not going to go through this derivation. We'll simply report the result. The simple linear regression line. The expression for the simple linear regression line is y hat equals an intercept beta, uh, not beta now, b0 plus b1 times x. Where b1, the slope of the simple linear regression line, is obtained by taking SSXY, we know how to compute that, divided by SSX. And just to um, remind you, this is what SSXY is, the sum of the X residuals times the Y residuals. And SSX is just the sum of the X residuals squared. So that's how we find the slope of the simple linear regression line. The intercept of the simple linear regression line, B0, is obtained by taking the average value of Y, so averaging over what might be the all the service call times, 
subtracting off the slope which we found here times the average value of x which might be the average of the uh, number of units serviced on a service call. These expressions are fundamental and should be learned. I've moved to the next page. Here's a scatter plot from the previous page where I've now superimposed the simple linear regression line and here's the equation of the simple linear regression line where we had first um, obtained the slope and then the intercept. When we say we've determined the simple linear regression line, essentially what we've done is we've determined a slope and an intercept. That's what it takes to specify a line. The simple linear regression line can also be referred to as the estimated simple linear regression line or just as the simple linear regression line or sometimes as the least square line and sometimes that's abbreviated as the LS LSL. Now we'll make a couple of important definitions. For the ith data point xi comma yi in our data set, the ith fitted value is defined as yi hat equals b0 plus b1 times xi. That is, we've simply plugged the x value of the ith data point into the simple linear regression line. The ith regression residual value ei equals yi minus yi hat. That is, the ith residual value is the y value of the ith data point minus the ith fitted value. The ith residual value indicates the amount of error when the ith fitted value is used to estimate the y value of the ith data point. When the fitted value overestimates the y value of the ith data point, that is when yi hat is bigger than yi, then the residual is negative. When the ith fitted value underestimates the y value of the ith data point, then the error, that is the residual value, is positive. Here's a picture that indicates the situation for the ith data point xi, yi. Here's the simple linear regression line passing by the ith data point. When we plug xi into the expression uh, for the simple linear regression line, we get our estimate yi hat of the y value of the ith data point. The error we make when we try to estimate the yi value using yi hat is this vertical line, this distance yi minus yi hat. That's the ith residual value. The ith residual value is simply a measure of the amount of variation of the ith data point from the simple linear regression line. Here are some properties of the simple linear regression equation. The first one comes from the derivation. We'll just report it. The least squared technique used in the derivation assured that we choose the intercept and the slope for the least square line that minimizes the sum of square error, which is simply take each one of the residuals, square it, and add them all up. If we were to use any other line other than the simple linear regression line, this sum of square error, the errors that we would make in aggregate, would be larger. The second property comes from rearranging terms in the definition for the uh, residual value. If we were to just add the yi hat to both sides and put it over here, we could read off that yi equals yi hat plus the ith residual value and then we know the yi hat quantity the ith fitted value is just as we've placed it in here so this is just a rearrangement of terms 
uh, in the definition definition of the ith residual value. When we compare this expression on the sample side with the expression for the theoretical simple linear regression model uh, in section one, we see the reasonable the reasonableness of statement three down here, which says the intercept of the uh, least square line is a sample estimator of the intercept of the true regression line. The slope of the simple linear regression line is an estimator of the slope of the true regression line. And finally that the residual value is an estimator of the error term. I've moved to the next page. Property 4 simply indicates three items that are obtained in the derivation of the simple linear regression equation. Those three items are the sum of all the regression residuals is zero. The average x value and average y value as a point satisfy the estimated regression equation. And finally, the sum of all the fitted values equals the sum of all the y values over all data points. At the top of the next page, exercise two begins. <clears throat> I'm going to let you do this exercise. You can see what's, um, what's done here. These are the same two, the first two data points are the same as the ones used in exercise one and then I've appended a third data point here. So you're no longer just passing a, a line through two points, you're actually doing statistics. Uh, in part A you're asked to make a scatter plot of those three um, data points. Later on you'll be asked to put more on that plot. Down here you're asked to complete a collection of columns of data. For example here these are the x residuals, the x residual squares, you sum that, you get the SSX quantity, the y residuals, y residual squares, SSY, the product of the x and y residuals, and then you sum that, you get the SSXY quantity, and then you're in a position to uh, come up with the slope and the intercept of the least square line, and then you can put the least square line on the plot and so on and so forth. And uh, then you're asked to find the fitted values here, uh, the residual values here, square the residuals, sum the residual, the residual squared and get the SSE quantity and then yet answer another question. So I'm going to let you go on that exercise and I'll see you on the next screencast.